Doctors recommend that teenagers get 8 to 10 hours of sleep every night, but many are sleeping far less than that. And nearly one in four also suffers from insomnia. William Brangham reports from California on why it's so hard for so many teens to sleep and how it's taking a toll on their mental health. It's part of our ongoing series, Early Warnings, America's Youth Mental Health Crisis. It'll be another long night for 15-year-old Keiko Rakin as she prepares for another day of high school in Alhambra, California. I have homework due every night. I usually have two tests a week. I'm in sports and that's every day after school for two hours. I'm in five clubs and- Five clubs. Five, and I have leadership positions in all of them. And I can get overwhelmed, you know, I can cry. I have a hard time breathing. And it's just me thinking I have so much to do and I just don't have the time to do it. The academic pressure, the college pressure, the sense that she's not doing enough, it's turned Keiko into a night owl. Most nights, this high school sophomore says she goes to bed around 1 a.m. and only sleeps five or six hours. Does that feel like enough sleep for you? No, because it's really hard for me to get up and the whole day I'm constantly yawning um, and I feel like I can fall asleep in class. Keiko is not alone. According to the CDC, more than 70% of American teenagers are not getting enough sleep. There's no question in my mind that teenagers' sleep is less than it's ever been and probably worse than it's ever been. Lisa Damore is a clinical psychologist in Shaker Heights, Ohio, and the author of The Emotional Lives of Teenagers. While there are multiple factors causing 40% of high school students to report having persistent feelings of sadness and hopelessness, Damore says sleep is a major culprit. When teenagers are not getting enough sleep, they are grumpier. They have a harder time focusing. They have a harder time remembering things. They're more likely to have accidents. They like themselves less. They like other people less. The bottom line on this is that if we could bottle what sleep does for teenagers and truly for all of us, this would be the most valuable drug on the market. So just imagine devising this experiment. Researchers make their subjects wake up hours before their normal wake up time. Then you force them to perform complex mental tasks for five days straight. That's basically describing the average teenager's school week. Before the pandemic hit, the average public high school start time across the nation was 8 a.m. Last year, California became the first state in the nation to mandate that classes begin no earlier than 8.30. While that's a welcome change for many, it hasn't changed much for Gabby Wong. She's a junior at Mark Keppel High in California's San Gabriel Valley. Yeah. Sleeping is just so, it's a victorious feeling almost because it's like, I finally get to have enough sleep. As co-captain of the school's debate team, you can have an adequate amount of speech time and so that the judges see that you're up here. One of her many extracurriculars, her school day starts at 7.30 a.m. You know I get nightmares so frequently, like anxiety riddle nightmares. It's the beginning of a grueling schedule that often keeps her up past midnight, something she admits has taken a toll. I've suffered with mental health issues since I was 11, but every night before I go to sleep, I just stare at the ceiling and I think, what have I not done? What assignments have I not finished? What extracurricular activities are coming up? And you're thinking, I'm not having an easy time with this. Why am I the only one struggling with this? But everybody is struggling with it. Gabby told us her sleep is often fluctuating. She sleeps between three and seven hours a night during the week, but up to 12 hours a night on the weekend. I still wake up feeling tired every day, no matter what. Are your parents on you about this? Yes. My parents have cut my Wi-Fi is off by 12 a.m. because they're so concerned about me not sleeping. But the thing is that concern develops and then it ends up with me being anxious about not finishing certain things by 12. Every student we spoke with said this wasn't a result of parental pressure. They said these intense schedules and expectations were just part of being a teenager today. Another major impediment to teenage sleep, technology. Roughly nine out of 10 teens say they have access to smartphones or laptop computers, and nearly half say they are online almost constantly. There are plenty of teenagers who are losing sleep because they have their technology in their rooms, because they are on their phones late at night, because social media is so hard to pull away from. So there's definitely reason to think that using smartphones, and especially at night, 
has something to do with sleep loss in teenagers. The brain parts that are lit up, so to speak, um, are showing us variations among adolescents who get better or worse sleep. At UCLA's Center for the Developing Adolescent, neuroscientist Adriana Galvan and developmental psychologist Andrew Fellini are studying the links between sleep and teenage mental health. It's a chicken or egg problem. Is it that the mental health concern or issues cause poor sleep, or is it the other way around? And they're, they're related, it almost doesn't really matter. But we know that people who suffer from, for example, anxiety or depression, which are the most common um, mental health challenges that adolescents may undergo, are associated with poor sleep. Fellini and Galvin have found that students who perform well in school academically often sleep less and are more likely to face mental health issues compared to their well-rested peers. But even more alarmingly, other research has found that students who sleep less than six hours a night are three times as likely to consider or attempt suicide compared to students who sleep eight hours. This all comes at a time when teenagers experience a natural shift in their circadian rhythm that begins to push them to stay up later. It's not their fault, it's not their choice. Yeah. It's what the biology is telling yeah. them to do. So they have to go to bed later and then we're actually many times asking them to go to school earlier and actually loading on the academic demands in the evening. So what should parents do who are trying to help their teens get more sleep? Experts say their behavior is just as important. It's not necessarily you're going to be on them all the time and harassing them to go to bed, but have an agreed upon pattern and that in times that you're going to go to sleep, that's reasonable for teenagers. We're in a society where Americans do not prioritize sleep. It's not just the adolescents who are doing this. All of us stay up late to, to get a little bit more work done or to go work out or get up early to go work out. All of that is passed on to what our kids see and model their behavior after. You guys have any ideas for like what the middle event should be like in between those two? Gabby told us she's committed to trying to get more sleep going forward. She also co-founded a mental health nonprofit that aims to reach even younger students in the San Gabriel Valley. We would talk about how depressed we were and a lot of adults would think you're only in like what, fourth grade, fifth grade? But that was how we were feeling and nobody validated that because they didn't expect it. And so seeing that, I don't want someone in the shadows to be going through that without anybody, frankly, to step in and look at that and say, I see you what you're feeling is valid. Just because you're young, it doesn't mean you can't feel that way. For Keiko Rakin, she also hopes her school will create an anonymous tip line for students to talk to other students about their mental health challenges. Teenagers as a whole, we have those points where we go into these dark places that we can't eat, we can't sleep, we can't focus. And I've been there a couple times, but I think that just talking to someone, if it's alone, like you're alone that night and you just really need someone, that just having that connection, whether it's not in person or not, could really help. It would be much needed help that hopefully leads to some much needed sleep. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham in Alhambra, California.